parcours d'une œuvre. There's various ways in which ideas of mobility um, are woven through my work, but I think the best place to begin is to talk about where this work actually began, which was in Buffalo, New York. I was a student there, and it was my first time living in this typical car-centric American city. And I actually tried to walk to school and ride my bike, and ultimately I was totally thwarted by the automobile. I was walking through an urban infrastructure that was completely excluded me. And so... That led me, um, quite naturally in my mind, but it led me to begin carrying cars. You see, I had this idea that if I could invert the relationship of the human and the automobile, so where the car usually carries the human, I wanted to sort of turn that idea upside down on its head and see what would happen. So the first piece that I made was a knapsack uh, fabricated from scavenged car parts. And I started doing these strange kind of pilgrimages around this suburban infrastructure, uh, the clover leaves and overpasses, this landscape which had originally frustrated me. And I called the work dromomania, which is a term defined by Paul Virilio as um, a deserter from the, or a dissenter from the ancient regime, and in psychiatry to this compulsive desire to walk or wander. So after making this piece, this piece led me to my next piece, which uh, is called Portage Ford Taurus. And with this piece, I took apart an entire 1995 Ford Taurus, and I, I made what I call the elements of a canoe trip. So there were canoes and knapsacks and rucksacks and paddles and a dog sled. And I managed to convince nine of my friends to help me portage this car around Niagara Falls. And we were following the original eight-mile portage path of Father Louis Hennepin and Robert René de La Salle, who were the first white men to see Niagara Falls. They were early explorers. So this piece began the use of history in my practice, this idea of revisiting a historical moment as a way to investigate our present place. And I specifically began to think about the way that these early fur trade routes and the routes of the explorers are almost like the forefathers to our current system of highways, freeways, and overpasses. And so I really began to think about using myths about the Western frontier as a way to critique and understand contemporary car culture. So it was kind of the performative nature of these works, and particularly the collective toil of this two-day portage around Niagara Falls, where I really began to think about the act of walking, this sort of physical power of the human body, almost as this act of change, this act of defiance. So where you typically have one person per car traveling with speed and luxury and convenience, it's, it's a really subversive idea to flip that over and have nine people in this really difficult kind of collaborative toil as their mode of transportation. I really, at this point, began thinking about the car almost as a symbol for progress. And by progress, I mean, that's in quotation marks for me. It's, a, it's an idea that is summed up by... Uh, Henry Ford's utopian vision of having a car in every driveway. For me, this um, industrial or Fordian colonial notion of progress is something that I think is dead or at least slowly dying. And I sort of imagine myself as an artist scavenging from its broken relics and fabricating these new things. The next body of work that I moved into um, were actually two photo series, uh, one titled Mountain Man and the next Ford Explorer. While these pieces expanded on that theme of using myths about the Western frontier as a way to look at car culture, they also began to focus even more specifically on ideas of a vast um, sort of sublime wilderness. These links were began to be made for me as I started to think about car brand names um, like Ford Explorer or Chrysler Plymouth Voyager, Nissan Tracker, etc., that were already making these links between these, these wildernesses and, and these empty landscapes. I also began to think about the history of, um, or the legacy of colonialism in Canada and began making links with uh, ideas of manifest destiny and the way that these beliefs sort of persist today in our, in our sort of God-given uh, right to, to drive cars or this belief in a God-given right to drive cars. And so with, with this, these bodies of work, once again, I made this sort of object or a kind of artifact of survival um, to go out on an adventure uh, or journey of some kind. And with Mountain Man, I made a rear view walking stick 
and then these steel belted snowshoes, which were, um, I scavenged all these shredded tires and pulled out the steel belting. And, and then I went out with these two objects and I posed in these incredibly beautiful uh, landscapes in the uh, Rocky Mountain Range. And with the Ford Explorer, I chose a slightly different landscape, uh, Canadian landscape, but again, one connected to the early fur trade routes. And I posed with my windshield wiper tent and this side mirror musket. I think my draw to these vast wilderness landscapes was both for this notion of an epic voyage or this sort of physical mobility, and then this link to the, the early fur trade routes. But there was also this link to early landscape painting from the 1800s. And these were works that were depicting this quote unquote new world of North America as vast and empty and sublime. And of course, the landscape wasn't empty, but that's how it was depicted. Um, so the photographs that I made of these work were very large in scale and they kind of reference this um, style and colonial attitude of the Hudson River um, School of Painting and artists who had traveled with the fur trading companies. And I guess as my practice has developed, I've become more and more intrigued by um, history and by this idea of creating these sort of iconic images that reenact a colonial past. For me, I guess it's kind of part of that old saying that history keeps repeating itself. And um, I believe that it does unless we stop and revisit it. And so um, some of these photo series and even more so newer bodies of work like uh, Head Smashed In, Engine Block, Buffalo Jump um, are works which are really about mobility in time. So maybe not so much about a specific um, landscape or uh, physical mobility through space, but this idea of movement through time and, and this sort of um, cross-dressing with history as a way to um, reinvestigate future mobilities. So I guess I conclude by saying, um, in terms of being part of this um, global debate about mobility, I find it very exciting uh, to be an artist because I get to create these impossible possibilities uh, for the future where I can um, just create these objects which are about provoking thought.